At this event last year, we outlined three expectations. Today, we are reaffirming, we're updating, and we're upgrading those expectations. On cash remittances, upgrading that to 8 billion, and this gives us a very large pile of cash, 3 billion to be exact, allowing us to reduce debt and improve growth. And on our dividend payout ratio target has also been increased to 55 to 60% a consequence of the improvement in earnings quality. This means our dividend should continue to grow strongly. I don't think it's much more complicated than that. So where are we? Well, we've delivered the fix, uh, and I think we've delivered the fix and then some. We've exceeded every target we put out over the last few years. And now we have somewhat an embarrassment of riches, I guess, on our balance sheet. Uh, yeah, it was hard. Um, it took the vast majority of my team's time and my own time over a number of years. But now we are much leaner and much fitter. We have got much focus, much more focused, what we think are leading franchises, and we'll show you that today. So what I am saying is the pruning of our orchard is complete. The pruning of the apple trees is complete. We're now entirely focused on growing and strengthening the businesses. We have upgraded our growth forecasts. So on growth, our ambition is to do better than mid-single digit, and we'll cover, Tom will cover that in a bit more depth later. And it's very achievable. Our markets and large segments within those markets are growing well. And the fact is, you can see the results, you can see the market. The fact is, in particular large markets, we have picked up market share. We've picked up market share in most of the segments in the UK, for example, but it goes much wider than that. Now, just to be clear, market share isn't how we measure, but the market share and the growth and revenue is just a function of the fact of where we are as a group. Now, digital is also a key enabler of our increased growth ambition, and in fact, has been the key enabler of our growth this year. And uh, in some areas, it surprised us, and we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but the fact is we've got leading market IP and we're now bringing all these together in some pretty cool propositions. And what we're doing with that, we're particularly in the early days of that, we've been winning some big partnerships like HSBC. Put that as a tick in the digital column. But of course, digital isn't just about innovation and cool IP and products and distribution. It's also about efficiency and it's also about the customer service and particularly in the back office. And uh, I've been in Bristol and Sheffield recently and seen what they're doing with TCC and digital, and that's actually what's driving the business. Just to be clear, over the last three years, we've grown operating EPS by 5% CAGR. And this is no mean feat. In a tricky environment, where we also have been in the middle of restructuring and de-risking. We also had to contend with Brexit, low interest rates, and economic challenging economic growth in some of the markets, some of our larger markets. But despite all this and despite all these headwinds, so there's no excuses, we have still managed to grow by 5% CAGR. Capital and cash, or more specifically, excess capital and excess cash. Now, it's not exactly new news that we have capital in excess of our desired range. Um, but the size of it, I think, will surprise you a bit. And today, we're going to be a bit more specific. At our 2016 Capital Markets Day, we announced a target of seven billion of remittances. Um, I know quite a few people thought that was uh, around the room, probably thought there was going to be a bit of a stretch. Well, today, the remittance figure is going to be eight billion. Uh, this is partly due to proceeds from disposals, uh, but it's actually mainly due to some better than we expected capital generation, which seems to be continuing. Uh, that's partly because we were selling more capital light products, uh, we repriced products, we were able to cross sell products more effectively than we thought, and we just also got to understand Solvency 2 better, so every time we look at it, the capital generation just seems to be coming along nicely. As a result of this, we expect to have a total cash pile at the group centre to deploy of three billion over the next couple of years. That's of deployable capital above, you know, well above the range, of three billion in the next two years, with two billion pounds in 2018 alone. 
and I choose my words carefully, and at least one billion pounds, at least one in 2019. So what are our plans for deployment in 2018? We plan to use 900 million, I'm very specific in that number, to pay down some very expensive debt. This is a no-brainer. Now to be clear, to be really clear, I am comfortable with our current level of debt. But importantly, and the main reason to be frank, is this will save us a huge amount in terms of cash paid out each and every year in, in interest expense from the group. The, okay, so if you put it all together, it's over 100 million, actually. Uh, the remaining 1.1 billion of the 2 billion, that's next year alone, because you've got more the following year, just to be clear, uh, will be split between bolt-on M&A and capital returns. And we will continue to look for attractive deals that will strengthen our franchises and importantly, be accretive to growth. So better quality earnings, higher cash conversion, so we are upgrading our dividend payout. It's pretty simple maths. This makes our dividend payout affordable. And so what we've done, uh, we spoke to the board and it's very appropriate that we progressively increase our payout ratio to 55 to 60% of operating EPS by 2020. And ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the facts, we've grown dividends by double digit in each of the last three years. And it looks like that sort of growth will continue for quite a while longer.